Welcome to module number 4, Roots of Equations. Now, we're up to the third method, the newton raphson method. So, what is NR method? It is widely known method in finding the roots because it is simpler and faster than the previous methods. The only drawback of NR method is its usage of the derivative function f prime of x and the function itself. Thus, NR method is only useful when the derivative f of x, uh, f prime of x, can be readily computed. Okay, so uh, let's start with the Taylor series expansion. Okay, so um, in the Taylor series of expansion, we have the, f of, uh, the function itself. Okay, if you want to get the next point, okay, i plus 1. And you have the if you have this for example in the in this example of uh, graph here so if you have the x1 here and then the next point 1 plus 1 2 okay so basically we have we have to get the uh, this line here okay and until we reach this point okay so um, so this is expressed by the Taylor series of expansion but um, here we just get the first, uh, the function itself at point x1 or i in this uh, general equation plus the first derivative of that function times the difference of x1 and in this example x2, okay? Plus a certain function that represents all other remaining higher degree functions, okay? So um, you can be the second derivative, third derivative, and so on and so forth. Okay, because it's it's possible that your function, okay, let's say uh, you have a function here, uh, and then it is described by this this point. Oh, sorry, it is not possible. So from this point, and then like that, no. So from this point, so this this line from a uh, certain x uh, five to x six, for example, no, at point x five to x six. Okay, so you can define this line with a. Taylor series of expansion, so um, combination of different uh, derivatives, okay? So we just assume that OZ, or this, the one here, okay, is a um, function representing higher degree functions, okay? So equating the function into zero, which is the goal of the root of equations, which is um, equating it to zero and then finding the x that makes it zero. Okay, so assuming. Uh, okay, so we have this one. Okay, assuming that x i is very close to x i plus one. Okay, it's very close. Meaning, if you have two, um, uh, for example, x five and x six, just between, uh, it's like two dots. No, that is very close to each other. Okay, so th then you can neglect O z. Okay, so OZ, so you can, it's negligible. So the value of that one is not so significant, thus we can truncate it or we can remove it. Then we have this equation. Okay, so we can, when we remove this one, we have this equation. So meaning, so the next X, okay, is equal to the previous one minus the function at that X so I divided by the, the first derivative of uh, x i um, sorry this should be uh, this should be without plus one sorry I think this is a typo error okay so the first uh, derivative of x or the x i okay and uh, here also so you can uh, change your delta x okay is equal to negative of x okay so it's similar so um, we can describe this one in a graph Okay, so um, actually you have this function, okay, so f of xi here, and then, um, okay, so the derivative is actually the difference of the function. Actually, we know that the function of x is simply y. This is actually the slope of the line, okay, at point xi, okay, at xi, okay, so uh, what is the tangent no, if you have a curve there what is the tangent at that point okay so the, given this is your curve 
And then, what will be the tangent line at this point xi? So, that's the, the first derivative of xi. Okay? So, um, equating this one to 0, actually, this is 0. Okay? And then, you have two points xi and xi plus 1. Okay? So, then we can go back to this um, function here. So, so that you can understand. Okay? So, meaning, uh, you're the first derivative. It's just the slope of the tangent line, okay? Because it is the rise f, okay, the difference from, um, okay, so I, I will illustrate that one, sorry, in a given graph here. So copy this one. So meaning that line here, okay, so that's the, um, the rise and the run. Okay, so this is um, uh, delta y, and then this is the delta x, okay, so f, prime of x, okay, uh, is equal to delta y over delta x. And we know that this one here, okay, so the delta y is 0 and then f of x1, xi. Okay, so therefore this y here is equal to f of xi minus 0. And then delta x, so you have xi minus um, x of i plus 1. Okay, so I think you cannot see that one. Okay, so that. So that's basically the slope of the line. Okay. So it approximates f of x by a straight line that is ta tangent to the curve at xi. Hence, xi plus 1 is the point of intersection between x-axis and the tangent line. Okay, so you can see no, that uh, xi plus 1, so the function at that point is equal to 0. Okay, so intersection between um, f of uh, f is equal to 0 and the tangent line. This formula is repeated until a predefined convergence criterion E is reached given by this one. Okay, So if the two points are very small, then um, then you can stop. Okay, So if you define this one as a very small, then it will take a lot of time, or I mean longer. But if you define that one, maybe 0.001, then maybe it will take a lesser time. With an initial value x of 0, instead of using bracketing interval, and our method is simpler than the incremental and bisection methods. Okay, so just uh, two methods earlier in the previous uh, video. So um, using only the initial value x of 0, let's say this is your x of 0, and then you can get directly xi plus 1, okay? Because um, you can get the function or the tangent line from here, and then you get the xi plus 1, okay? So defined by this formula, okay? So if you can look at this, no? So you're given with x of 0, the first uh, given initial value, and then you get the two, fun the function at that x of 0, and then the derivative of that function, at that point, 0, x of 0, okay, this is a typo, no? So, without plus 1, okay? So, then you get the next x, and so on and so forth, until the difference between xi and xi plus 1 is very small, okay? This one is very small that you can stop your iteration, and then you define the latest xi plus 1 as your um, final, final, um, root okay so here you have the delta x is less than the tolerance compute this one okay and then let x is equal to x plus the difference of x okay then so here our newton raphson it's very simple if you look at the the newton raphson formula okay and actually, we have a very uh, big toler, uh, small, very small tolerance, one to the negative, uh, ten to the negative nine, so zero point zero 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 nine or one. Okay, and uh, okay, so we do the loop. So you see the interval here, dx. Okay, and then we update. So by adding the difference, x i plus one minus x one. So we add that one as the new value. Okay, and then if dx is very small or less than, okay, so this one is xi plus 1 minus xi. And then if this is le less than this value, then we can stop and then return x as well as the iteration number. So iteration is the 
uh, the how many uh, steps or iteration we did no? and then if not if this is more than 30 if the iteration is more than 30 then um, it will finish this loop and then it will print too many iteration you can actually change this one to 100 if you like okay so let's try an example so we have this one um, find the root of this one function which is equal to zero okay we create this one to zero with the initial value 2.0 okay so okay we need to define the function f and then get the first derivative and i know um, most of us knows how to get this one okay so so very simple how to get the first derivative now if there are functions that cannot be derive then that's the limitation of newton Lapson, and there are advanced methods in solving those problems okay okay then we have to input uh, the newton Lapson 2.0 okay um, actually um, i think if i'm not mistaken so the input of newton Lapson is simply the um, x okay and then it will uh, given this f of x and the f of x and then we define this one globally so the newton option will recognize the two functions here okay and then you just input the initial value and then it will give you the the root now take note the root is very um, you see the the value very 2.0999 okay and uh, if you notice the true value if you compute it analytically okay it's 2.1 which is very close no 2.0999999 okay so if you round it off to 10th tenth, uh, tenth digit so that will be 2.1 okay that's it very simple okay for the newton raphson method 